The Vietnam War is remembered mainly for the violence of the massacres and ambushes that occurred, the fearsome actions of the Viet Cong, and the bloody advance of the Americans on the villages and towns full of innocent civilians. Secondly, because it was a conflict in which the United States favored the use of special units and commando operations, among which the Green Berets Corps stands out, who used all kinds of controversial strategies, from guerrilla tactics to sinister mass executions or surprise raids that are still considered war crimes today. But even more questionable were the actions of the Military Assistance Command in Vietnam also called the Study and Observation Group or MACVSOG, an elite special force that operated since 1964 in the conflict, in highly classified missions. Their tasks were heterogeneous and varied throughout the conflict, but were usually related to carrying out operations that were at the limit of the legal or even the moral. Despite the impressive level of secrecy with which the MACVSOG acted, these battalions received constant attacks from the Viet Cong, who focused on attacking the special bases of the commandos, called Forward Operating Bases or FOBs. But then, how was it possible for a group of guerrillas with a clear technological, weapons and tactical inferiority to have taken entire battalions of commando groups trained at the most demanding levels by surprise? But before continuing, we want to introduce you to our new channel, Military Might. Here we'll explore the extraordinary world of the armed forces, armored vehicles, weapons of mass destruction and the most important military conflicts of today. You'll find the link to subscribe in the description of the video and in the first comment. Are you ready? Let's get started. Normally, the Viet Cong took advantage of holidays, both Western and Eastern, to launch their offensives against American forces. This was because the North Vietnamese knew that most soldiers received rest on these dates, and that security in the camps was much lax. Support from South Vietnamese troops also waned sharply under these circumstances, leaving U.S. troops to deal with crises with the resources at their disposal. It is also important to remember that the war in Vietnam was one of the campaigns with the greatest involvement of recreational drugs in the history of the United States, and consumption grew exponentially on days off or holidays. It was just when they were most vulnerable that the stealthy North Vietnamese platoons hit the Green Berets. Some military historians say that if a greater effort had been made to avoid drug use, this conflict could have had different results for the Americans. What do you think about this? You can leave your opinion in the comments. In fact, the day that the Green Berets lost the most units in the entire war was precisely one of the first offensives that the Viet Cong launched against the secret bases. In August 1968, the camp known as FOB4 came under deadly attack by North Vietnamese forces, who raided the facility in the Five Elements Mountains near Da Nang by surprise. During the offensive, a Viet Cong battalion infiltrated FOB4 and managed to shoot down 17 American specialists, in addition to wounding 125 more. However, this bloodshed against the Americans would not be the last in the campaign. In fact, the North Vietnamese came back to hit the Green Berets and MACVSOG several more times, but there was one attack that is forever etched in the minds of U.S. Army veterans, perhaps not because it was the most brutal, but because it demonstrated the relentless audacity of the guerrillas. An exemplary case of this methodology occurred on December 31, 1968, on New Year's Eve. The night was profoundly still, and at the Green Berets FOB Base 1, located in Phu Bai, there was peace and celebration, mixed with an unusual sense of danger. The Americans had learned from the previous attacks and expected an ambush on the eve of the festivities. The intelligence collected the previous days during the reconnaissance missions had confirmed these suspicions, after finding some clear marks near the camp, where the mortars should be placed to have a clean shot against the Americans, in addition to detaining a man who counted the distance between the base and other points of interest, where the Viet Cong light artillery would presumably be located. The secret base entered a state of absolute alert, which included the drawing up of a defense operation against a possible ambush, added to a plan to surround the guerrillas who were supposed to attack the camp. Thus, the MACVSOG High Command formed the Diamondback Reconnaissance Group, made up of both Green Berets and South Vietnamese specialists. 
This battalion would lead before dawn in the direction of Laos, to cover all the ground through which it was believed that the Viet Cong forces would arrive. Meanwhile, the base erected its defenses against the raid. Commando preparations included digging trench lines, placing heavy machine guns in perimeter turrets, mortar nests, as well as specifically designated areas for soldiers to take shelter. Despite all efforts, and even taking into account the fact that these were top-secret facilities, ranked at the top of state secrets, the Vietnamese always made their way into them. On the other hand, the base bordered a training center belonging to the South Vietnamese troops, which, despite being allies of the United States, were suspicious and closely watched by the Green Berets. Most Americans believed that it was the Vietnamese themselves who were selling the information to their sworn enemies. At dawn, the Diamondback reconnaissance team fanned out on its way to Laos while FOB-1 waited patiently for the guerrillas to arrive, but the enemy never came. On the contrary, the only noise that disturbed the arrival of the new year was the emergency calls from the Diamondback group. The plan of the North Vietnamese, completely underestimated by the Americans, had turned out to be brilliant. The signals of the mortars, in addition to the other signs that promoted the offensive, had been a decoy. As the battalion that was to find the guerrillas advanced, they were ambushed by Viet Cong forces. Before they could react, the Diamondback members found themselves completely surrounded, under a hail of AK-47 bullets and constant mortar fire. But the North Vietnamese plan did not end there. Most of the offensive was focused on the North American Green Berets, while the South Vietnamese troops received practically no attention from the guerrillas. Three Americans were killed, and dozens more wounded, while local allies escaped totally unscathed. This led the survivors of the attack, once they had returned to FOB-1, to interrogate the South Vietnamese, to find out how they had known about the plan. Local officials were overruled by the Green Berets, and a power struggle between the Allies began in the midst of a seemingly endless war. This was also one of the goals of the North Vietnamese. This Viet Cong psychological warfare tactic worked to perfection, as it greatly increased suspicions that the South Vietnamese were supporting the enemy, and created significant dissent between the US and South Vietnamese military command, weakening their alliance perhaps not definitively, but long enough for the Viet Cong to advance relentlessly on Laos and Da Nang. Thank you very much for joining us, and stay tuned for our next video.